This is Sergio with Heredia Knife Works, aka Psycho Surge, and I decided that I was going to make this short video to show you guys what you can do with the Inkscape program. I think somebody on here asked, uh, I think it was Humongous asked if anybody used this Inkscape program. So I just want to show you guys what you could do with it. Uh, as far as patterning goes, I use this program a lot. I really enjoy it. So I'm going to come over here. I just uh, picked a knife that I saw earlier on uh, Reddit, I believe. And usually when I find something like this, I might get some inspiration from it. Um, I might try to, you know, not copy, but, uh, you know, emulate some curve or some part of it. Or maybe I just want to pattern the whole thing and give it a, give it a go uh, with my own interpretation. So usually I come over here and I start with the snipping tool. And this is a good example of a profile shot. You can see this knife is um, you're kind of looking at a tangent to it. Um, this is going to be a better picture than if the knife is tilted, you know, away from you or or towards you. Um, obviously, the, the knife, if it is tilted away from you or towards you, the profile becomes different. And if you're going after a profile on a specific knife and you're not that interested in maintaining the uh, profile integrity, then, you know, that doesn't matter quite as much. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to save this as, um, just go, uh, Inkscape. All right. I've got Inkscape pulled up already. I've got a new document set. The presets on this are going to be in uh, millimeters, I believe, in metric, um, with this in uh, portrait instead of landscape. So first things I'll do, I'll come over here and we'll open this uh, snip, this uh, screenshot that I've got here. All right. All right, so you can see I've got this screenshot here. And I'm going to go to Document Properties and change a few settings here. So under here under the Display Units, you'll notice that this is in pixels. You'll want to change that either to inches, centimeters, or millimeters, depending on what it is that you're most comfortable with. Uh, I usually change this to Landscape over here. That changes the orientation of the, uh, the uh, palette that you're using. Um, and I'm not an expert at Inkscape, guys, so some of these terms that I use, it may not be the correct ones. And then um, sometimes, depending on what you're using, it may help to change this uh, page size to letter or A3 or what have you to give you a better idea of um, the size of it or if you're printing out the, uh, the pattern, that may help as well. And then um, the last thing I do over here is I come down to units um, and make sure that's in inches. So uh that's pretty much it as far as the settings go so i close that and zoom out here and uh, you can see that this is the eight and a half by 11 that i've selected so by clicking on the photo if you click again you can rotate this which i find helpful working with this um, kind of horizontally and then sometimes it helps to know the scale um, so for example i'm just going to come back here and maybe they're going to tell me the scale. How it's made. Three V's is the best ever. Yada, 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 yada. Nothing. Wow. All right. Not even going to tell me how big this thing is the blade length or anything all right well i suppose that illustrates another um another important point is if you are looking at uh if you are looking at a knife and you're trying to pattern it, it does help to know so over here we've got on a blade hq we've got the overall length at 9.69 let's call it 9.7 so that's helpful to know so we'll come back here to inkscape and what do we say that was like 9.7 um what i like to do is i like to line up the tip of this knife here uh kind of with the edge of the paper and then let's zoom out here so you can kind of see this but nine we'll just call it nine and uh nine and three quarters something like that so if you hold the control key while you 
drag this, it uh, helps to keep the scale of everything correct. If you can see up here where my cursor is, the there's a scale here uh, at the top, and you can see this little caret right here, right above my cursor. Um, that always points to where you're at, uh, so that kind of helps. So you can see I've overshot this just a little bit. So I'm going to click it again, hold control, and Yahtzee. Oh, no, as you can see, I moved this a little bit, so just a little undersized. You will have to recenter, or re uh, readjust the point of the knife there. So you may have to do this a couple times, and I'll zoom out here so you can see what I'm doing. And... All right, so pretty close. All right, so now that I've got my target uh, pattern here, kind of the, the correct size, uh, we'll come over here to the left. We've got some options. Um, the one you're going to want to pick here for patterning is Bezier Curve. So if you click this, what it's going to do is it's going to start uh, drawing a series of lines. You can hit the backspace key to get rid of those lines if you make a mistake. But I'll go ahead and start here at the point. And I will go ahead and kind of roughly pattern this. Uh, you can zoom in down here if you want to to get closer. Holding the middle scroll wheel on your mouse will uh, allow you to grab and move. And then I'm just going to kind of make some points here. You don't have to have that many points. Uh, you can adjust your curves and you can always add these points. So I'm kind of roughly just, you know, making a point or a segment per uh, per curve here. So you can see I've kind of bridged this little the choil there. Come out here. Um, this is where it can get interesting depending on the background is it may be hard to see the lines where the uh, knife begins and the background ends. So, all right, there we have it. We have a uh, rough bezier curve. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna zoom in there's some options here. I guess I probably should have covered this earlier, but if you want to move or transform, um, you know, let's see the background here. I'm gonna come up here to my cursor so now I can click on things. If I wanna move or transform, um, I can. I can, for example, I can come over here, rotate, you know, pick the increments of degrees, pick right or left, and then um, just for giggles here, I'll, uh, so you can see I can rotate that and I'm gonna hit the, Control Z for undo. So this is back square again. All right, so we'll come back over here and we're gonna select our edit uh, path nodes. And one of the things that I like to do is come over here to fill and stroke. Um, so you can change the fill of the shape that you've just made. You can also change the stroke paint. So I'll go over here with no fill, um, go to stroke paint, and then you can change this. So for example, I gotta click this first. Okay, so for example, you can change the color. That may help you uh, see the uh, line against the background there. Um, so you may wanna change it to blue or to red or to whatever. And again, you have to click this curve before you make your changes. So I think for this, I'll pick something like, oh, I can't see that for sure. Uh, we'll just go ahead and stick with black because I think that worked okay. All right, so zooming in here, uh, the nice thing about these Bezier curves is you can grab them and bend them and move them to whatever shape you want. Uh, these are the uh, curve handles, uh, and you can also adjust by using these curve handles. You see you can, uh, the longer the curve, or the longer the handle rather, the uh, the more that side of the curve wants to to push or influence the, the curve. So I'm just gonna come over here real quick. Uh, this isn't gonna be my finest work, but I'm just gonna make kind of a quick uh, version of this pattern here. Not gonna be too particular, just for the sake of this video. And again, I'm, I'm editing this just by pulling and dragging, but you can certainly uh, kind of play with the the handles. Uh, one thing to notice here is, this is a good example. 
So these two handles, the one on this side of the node and on this side of the node, they're uh, about straight right now. Um, if, for example, I was to, and this is exaggerated, but if you have your handles at an angle that is uh, less than 180 degrees on the opposite side here, so you can see, like, you know, basically I've got this uh, this spot where it's it's kind of a corner. So if you're if you're doing curves, it's it's good to have these handles, uh, you know, either straight on the side of the knife. So this is kind of straight right now, or kind of inflected. Um, but if you're more than straight, then you're definitely going to have a little uh, divot there, and that's probably more important if you're using a laser cutter or some other, you know, 3D printer or something like that. Uh, anyways, you can see there I just uh, double clicked and added a. Um, another point which of course I didn't really want and just gonna mess with this for a minute change this uh, you, sometimes you do want to add points uh, it can be helpful for example if you're combining or if you're uh, so here's an example of that inflection if you are combining uh, paths or if you're changing something like that um, for example you're adding a blade from one knife to uh, a different handle then it may be good to break those apart and uh, you can recombine them all right so now I can click on my background here and I can move this out of the way you can see that I've got uh, this knife here the other thing I can do I'm just gonna undo that right quick is you can add features like pins so you can see here I don't know why that's not showing up but Ah, it's just one section. That's why. Um, you can add. All right, I have no idea why it's doing that. All right, well, I must have changed a setting or something. Um, oh, okay, up here at the top. Yep. So I can do the entire, in this case, I can do the thong hole. I can just grab this guy and move it there. And now I have that feature located. All right. So now I can compare the two. If I'm happy with this, great. I can delete the photo in the back. And now I have my rough pattern. And it is should be roughly two size. One thing you'll notice I just did there is I grabbed one part of this. Uh, if you click and drag and grab all of this, you can right click and then you can group so now these two will move as one same thing applies here if you want to break these apart you can ungroup and there you have it you've made a basic pattern now one of the reasons that i really really like this software is if you want to change the blade shape for example if i kind of if i like this blade shape but um, let's say that I want more of a, like a semi Skinner or Nesmuk kind of, kind of blade. I want this to be higher. You know, I can just grab this and I can play with this shape and there you go. Now I have a different shape entirely, or let's say that I wanted to do a longer version of this. So I'll come over here. I'll select this. I can copy, I can paste. And now if I want, I can stretch this blade out a bit okay kind of looks kind of looks strange but you can kind of play with these features I can drop the point here a little bit if I want and now I have more of like a Swiss Army looking kind of blade I don't know like I said not my finest work but gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do with this program. So there you have it, um, like a long potato knife or something, I don't even know. Um, those are some of the things you can do. Uh, and again, you can change the, the uh, stroke paint, for example, if you wanted to overlay these two and you wanted to compare, now I have a green outline and I have a black outline. Um, this is going to snap to these points. You can see it's trying to um, snap these nodes together at some point or other. 
so just be wary of that you can turn that off in the settings if you want um, but yeah you can basically just you know keep copying and pasting and um, keep changing these designs you know as you see fit as you kind of want uh, again this is not my finest work uh, but it kind of shows you what you can do there's more of a worn cliff kind of shape um, see I got something funny going on here in the corner and then um, I guess while I'm here, I might as well show you guys breaking these patterns apart. So let's say that I like this uh, I like this blade that I've got going on here in the bottom pattern. And I want to steal that and put it somewhere else. Uh, there's two ways of doing this. I could, for example, overlay these two and then move all of the black lines to match the green lines. <clears throat> the other way to do that is come over here to the nodes tool and... I can double click here and I can change the type of um, node here. I can break it apart. So I'm going to break the path there. I'm going to click this. I'm going to break the path here. And you can see that this uh, these nodes are a little bit different color. I'll zoom in here. There we go. These nodes look a little bit different, these ones that are broken apart. So I'm going to go to path and I'm going to go to break apart. And you can see that those have now become two different paths uh, and then the other thing you want to do is right click and ungroup so we go back to the cursor and now we should be able to move these separately so I can do the same thing for this one I guess I should go ahead and do that we'll go ahead and break this apart so I select that break that apart break that apart right click ungroup path break apart and there you go. I've got two different patterns. So now I'm just going to swap the blades on these. And uh, one thing you want to do is kind of zoom in and make sure that these, uh, these two actually intersect. So you can kind of do that by grabbing and it'll, it'll try to, whatever that says, cusp node or whatever. Uh, so there you go. It'll snap to that point so that, that snap can be a useful function. And then uh, the last thing you'll need to do to combine these paths is we're going to uh, grab both of those and we're going to go to group and then we're going to go zoom in and those nodes there, we're going to combine them with this join selected nodes button join selected nodes button and then the last thing that we have to do is oh, I didn't grab both of those all the way come over here to path and we're gonna go to combine all right as you can see they're the same color now uh, previously this half was green and this half was black but you can see now that they are the same so that's how you combine those and again if you you know do a lot with this you can come over here to transform for example I showed you the uh, rotate so let's say that I wanted to rotate this blade a little bit I can select my degrees and click apply here and if I wanted to for example I could I'll just show you guys with this here so I've got this blade maybe I want this blade to be a little bit more curved downwards so I can select this the other direction this rotate apply that and I can put these together and maybe I think that looks stupid so maybe I rotate it back and maybe that looks better or maybe that doesn't and again you can free rotate this if you want but uh, for more precise control um, you can use this transform all right so I'm gonna go ahead and save this like I would a pattern that I was gonna keep and delete all of the rest of this. And now I can take my pattern and I can save it. So if you're using a 3D uh, printer, then you're gonna wanna save this as an R14, what is this, DS, yeah, DXF R14. Um, you can save it as an F SVG, which is the Inkscape file format. That'll allow you to come back and uh, play with it again. 
uh, change the shape of it, adjust it however you want. Um, but if you're sending this to SolidWorks or CAD or a 3D printer or something else, then you're probably going to want to save it as this DXF. So save it there. I don't mess with any of those settings. Just hit OK. And there you have it. Saved. And uh, like I said, I, I do this uh, quite a bit. Let's see here. Um... Okay, this, this is an excellent example. So this is a, I think his name's Del Leon or something like that, I can't remember. Uh, anyways, I saw a knife of his, kind of got inspired, and all these might look the same, but when you look closely, there's variations, different blade lengths, different shapes. Uh, this, I, this was also in, partly inspired by a loveless knife that I saw. So you can just kind of sit here and, you know, change, you know, the tip, the shape, you know, the curves, you can kind of change all of it, you know, get wild, make a tanto, whatever. Um, but anyways, that's a little bit of how you can use it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to, uh, hit me up on discord or whatever. Um, like I said, I enjoy doing this. I can just sit out here for hours um, playing around with shapes and coming up with something that I like. So anyways, I hope you guys have gotten something out of this, and hopefully uh, this helps. Thanks.